What is up nerds, Cloud here with another Honkai Star Rail video. And in today's video, I wanted to go over my clear that I did live on Twitch of my World 3 Difficulty 1 simulated universe. Just a disclaimer, I did use the Fire MC, Branya, Sila, and Natasha. All of them were level 50 ascended, and I didn't have all their traces. I don't want to go into the specifics of everything for them. I will go over the Lycones that I used. However, I just really wanted to use this as like a, a roadmap of the cards that I used to go forward because I used this exact same team a day before without leveling up any of my relics and died, but I used different relics this time and I was able to clear it with pretty much ease. Jumping right back into it, we see on World 3 Difficulty 1, we have Jepard as the main boss, weak against the physical, imaginary, and the thunder. I don't know if I'm saying lightning or thunder correctly. Uh, you may encounter a few more enemies. The main counter is, if you guys wanted more information on that, I'll add a little bit of the snippets in there, but if that's something that you think you specifically need, I'd love to hear some feedback and I can give you guys what I did specifically for it. But again, like I talked about at the beginning of the video, I am rocking the main character for my AOE shield, which a few of the, a few of the cards that I use throughout are shield based, followed by Branya as my support. Sila as my main damage dealer and Natasha to heal. When I was standing here looking at what characters to use, I typically use the hunt. So as I'm scanning through this, I take into consideration that A, Japard isn't weak against wind, so what's the point of using him? And then when I came across the path of remembrance, I was like, AoE damage, ice with a 120% chance to freeze. Now the higher that you go up, the more uh, effective resistance the enemies are gonna have and I was like surely Japard there's no way that he's gonna get frozen right as you saw uh, for the first thing that I picked I picked the one star blessing I think it's the best one number one blessing I typically go for the shield which I was lucky enough to get the shield again my fire MC the the pro the thought process here is I want the most offensive not offensive but offensive um, blessings that I can get my cards on top of that, if I can't get something, because I don't have a character that does follow-up attack, which I got so many of those, then I, I, my MC does give shield based on attacks. So uh, the first one that I picked was shield the characters take 60% less damage. So uh, every time my MC attacks, I get uh, shield. So um, kind of going through it quickly, uh, as I look through each one, when a character strikes, uses skill, attack a frozen enemy, their damage is increased. Again, when I read these, Looking at your characters who you use, do you have a character that has a follow-up attack? Does your character that have a, ca uh, a counter-attack, a shield, uh, depending on the element that they provide or the debuff that they provide? So when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at my characters and like, how oh, what can I do? So uh, the speed one almost made sense to me, but uh, this is before I got to use the Remembrance. So I was like, man, but I guess I will freeze. So I eventually knuckle up and just get it. Obviously, I, just because it's blue or yellow, well, yellow might be a different story, but just because it's blue does not mean that it's better. However, after an enemy receives ice damage, enemies adjacent receive damage equal to. And then again, I don't have a follow-up attack, and then I'm not going for the hunt, so I'm not getting too many hunt ones. So, when I'm looking at these, I'm deciding, which I've said 80 times, what am I doing? Uh, shields, fire damage, my remembrance is ice, Sila's doing quantum damage, which I have not seen a card for that yet. And I'm looking for, I can I look for anything with a max HP boost for Natasha. Yeah, so after an enemy has attacked six times, there's a 121% chance to for them to become frozen for one turn. This does not this does take into their effective resistance, but uh, because I'm so focused on the frozen, that's what I was going for. Now the Curio, upon entering battle, increases damage dealt by all allies for 16% for every 100 cosmic fragments you want. There is definitely a positive for spending your cosmic fragments to level up your blessings. However, 16% for every single time that I have a hundred and more. So if I have 200 Cosmics, I have access to 32% uh, increased damage. So uh, that's the other mainstay that I use for this. When I talked about it at the beginning of the video, where something I want to do that's like offensive based, that's what I want to focus on. Uh, when I go through the respite, I don't use the downloader to get access to anything else. I uh, I have the option to spend my cosmic fragments, which we do not because we want that damage buff that goes into every fight and the curio doesn't break. 
So looking at, uh, again, I talked about it before, about am I going to use the hunt? Am I going to use um, a remembrance? Am I going to focus on everything that I'm doing? The intent of it is for the team that I currently have. And that's why, again, depending on who you use, I want to try to beat World 3, 4, and 5 with Herda because the follow-up attack that she has, I think Herda gets tier list to load, uh, if that sentence even makes sense. So, again, I'm looking at this, and uh, the follow-up attack one doesn't work. Um, so, I picked the one that allows me to have a access to more damage after the last person goes for the most damage. So, it, I had a very small pickings there, but if I can give Sila a damage buff or give my MC a damage buff after Sila goes. <laughs> you can tell I was struggling there. So, again, funny enough, I actually pick another one for the hunt. Reason why I'm looking at this, uh, I want to use my ultimates as much as possible. So access to uh, the beginning of a turn, everyone gets four energy is is solid for me. Um, I immediately go all the way to the yellow because, as we know, the yellow is is what we want. And this is at the time I was like, man, can you not click with this? I kept calling it disassociation, um, but it's dissociation. So uh, after a character breaks an enemy's weakness, there's a hundred percent chance to apply uh, dissociation for one turn. Um, I won't reference what that is now because I genuinely forgot what it was, and but I'll pull, I'll have it up in the video somewhere. Uh, this is where I get access to the Remembrance, which costs 100 energy, uh, and it's like just a little extra homie that we bring into the fight that'll uh, freeze the enemy, depending on their effective resistance, for one turn. But there's another blessing that allows me uh, to give uh, Frozen River that I can freeze them for two turns, which is kind of like the the salt and pepper of this whole mix it saved me in the fight more times than i want to admit so uh again i'm beating these fights i'm not showing me beating the fights because i'm just kind of brute forcing my way i will say that i, I do manual mostly every fight at uh, level 45 and above uh so i'm looking at the shields i'm looking at uh if their health is lower i don't really care for if my character's health is lower uh, then 50%, I get a one-time buff because I don't want my character's health to be that low. So, uh, again, now that I've unlocked the Remembrance, I'm, I have access to free. So, I focus. I want to focus a little bit more on that. Uh, so, giving the damage up for that is what I'd prefer. Um, here's just like a clip of... I don't understand these uh, exactly, but like some of the events, I think the text kind of changes, but... I was either going to challenge Mr. Francis security and I just like, I literally whirled in circles, uh, which I was just showing this off that I'm gonna find a big robot, which big robot, not scary. Uh, we, fr I, I freeze the hell out of this mech, uh, which this was the first part of the, this run that was like, damn, man, I'm actually putting work with this freezing thing. Call me Mr. Freeze. So, again, I can't follow-up attack when a character launches a follow-up attack, when a character deals damage with a follow-up attack. So, none of these benefit me in any way. And just so you guys understand uh, what some of these follow-up attacks are, because someone might out there in the comments might think, well, doesn't Sela's, uh after she kills an enemy, isn't that she following up her in attack? What the game clarifies as a follow-up attack is a unique talent. So... Herda, uh, March 7th, Himiko, and currently Clara. They're the only ones that have a follow-up attack. So, can kind of look at it like a, uh, either a counterattack in Clara's perspective or March 7th. Um, or look at it like Herda, where if the enemy reaches a certain HP threshold, you'll follow up and attack with it. But it's not a follow-up attack in terms of Sila's ability. It's a talent-based thing. So after defeating big chunks over here, uh, we get access to our next yellow blessing, which looking through, talking with chat, you can see the absolute love and rage in my eyes for freezing the hell out of that fight. So now I'm really focusing on the frozen part, right? So when attacking enemies, there's a hundred six percent chance to put disassociation. Uh, as you, as you can see on the screen, uh, uh, you can hold and find out what disasso or dissociation means. 
and it means that the enemy is considered frozen and will be unable to act for a designated number of turns after freeze is removed deals additional ice damage equivalent to 30 percent of the enemy's max hp so not by the damage of the highest attack by the hp or defense it does it based on them and then i looked at the critical boost which i've seen that a bunch of times that comes from the hunt so your crit rate goes up by six percent and your crit damage goes up by 12 stacks up to that either says eight or six times i can't see with my eye patch on and then the buff can be transferred to allies and then stacks reset i'm not rocking with the hunt right now i want to focus on the frozen because the frozen gives me another a whole another turn for my team to either gain skill points or for me to start healing again so i go for the uh perfect experience fully now this is where i get my cosmic cheese as i was reading this i think because i have such a incredibly small t attention span I was reading the randomly gain one blessing of elation after obtaining curio when choosing your cure like I was just I got bored reading it which sounds so bad to say that publicly but I read the cosmic cheese and I was like oh every upon entering battle which that means if your character has a Edelon that allows them to have more skill points or something or some wild outside of battle doesn't affect but at, upon entering battle all allies Edelon resources go up so my five stars that I don't have access to, uh, their E1s, they now are just a bit better. Whether the uh, Sila, that's damage, and for Branya, it's speed. Or, uh, yeah, it's her uh, ability to move forward. So I picked the Space Cheese here with zero hesitation because I think, I honestly think it's a really good Curio to go for. We see Big Swole Jepard. Uh, I use the MC to buff defenses. I immediately have Branya. Uh, give everyone an attack boost and then because Natasha is my only Physical I have her activate her skill as well so um, The the ins and outs of this fight for my build as you saw I froze him immediately I had access to I saved up my remembrance for that first part again uh, because the enemy's frozen because of this uh, association uh, and his and the first wave, his uh, his friends are weak against Quantum. You can see that I'm doing solid amount of damage. And remember too, I think I walked in here with 400 and some odd cosmic fragments. Uh, I can't remember the exact number. I should have paid attention more to the video, but uh, I walked in there with over 300. So my damage that I'm doing is significant because I decided not to level up my blessings, which was a gamble in itself. Uh, so I take care of the enemies with little to no problem. Jappar didn't even get a turn during that whole time. And then I use my first ult. And I do almost 10k. This is not raw stats. I do have a quantum set, I believe, currently on my Sila. However, that's a, uh, due to the damage buff that I have. And I had a shield up at the same time coming from my MC. So things I'm focusing on this fight while I watch it again is I... I am paying attention so close to my skill points when it comes to my my MC for shields and Branya for her 100% bring up also her debuff cleanse and then but most importantly the one character I watch every single time is my Natasha uh, I want to keep that ult up as long as I can sometimes I get like trigger happy and I'm like I need I need to heal now um, but I'm looking and you can see that I, I dispelled my MC there because I wanted a ton I want to put on some shield that gives her a speed boost as well The damage will be there. It's the sustainability that I'm concerned about um, If I had access to a Jepard or maybe even a Clara to help with a little bit more taunting um, I think I would have had a little easier of a time, but again, it's totally absolutely doable uh, Jepard's counter it only counters once so he'll hit so I was like oh no he's gonna keep countering and he doesn't so as you like again I'm not using my remembrance because I'm saving it for the next turn I'm doing okay we got full health we got uh, what's gonna be two ults now uh, so I want to start saving for the next turn because I have no memory about so you can see me like I'm gonna click this out of this <laughs> so uh, I activate it and he resists so we go back to that last remembrance where I told you uh, the effect of resistance in that case me getting the frozen river does nothing for me now 
it does a lot for me because my my team's getting only hit by one character for the next turn. Uh, so I can take this opportunity to to get rid of them because they lose their turn too. It's not like they're frozen, they come back, they attack. They are they lost their turn. Um, so my focus is here is always on the ads. Shapar never brings out more ads. So I use this time to ensure that I get rid of the enemies as quick as possible. Oh, that damage. That damage. So the big swole guys, uh, something to be concerned about that they hit the adjacent character as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, when they when they lob their attack, it, it's like a little bit of an AOE spread, but it's just adjacent. Uh, as you saw, my Branya and my MC got hit there. Again, my focus is them. Jepard will go down slowly but surely. Uh, and while those two characters are out, Jepard has... He has no weaknesses, which it didn't matter to me anyway. But again, my Branya has the skill cone that allows my whole team to gain a little bit of speed. So right there, you saw my Natasha go ahead of my MC. Um, that's something that's a four-star. I got that from the polls. I didn't wail for it. It's only one copy. Again, I'm keeping this... I could use the Remembrance because you, you, the FOMO of, like, I could use it now, possibly freeze Jepard while he's frozen, um, gain more energy for it. And as you saw, there was a shield that he activates, which, uh, why the Remembrance, I think, is incredibly useful here. Um, again, first time I use it, the first time he, uh, I win against it, right? He resisted it again, but his other opponent, oh, I'm sorry, his homie was gone. So, uh, big AoE, my shields covered that, but like I was saying before, I didn't get to cover it while it was happening, but there is a, a shield circle. Uh, if you look uh, above Jepard's head, there's like a yellow circle with a percentage, and that just talks about exactly uh, how much shield he has. When you guys get, when we get hit as the character, it's yellow. Yellow means that that's the shield taking the damage rather than the health. The health is that gray one, um, depending on if it's elemental, but... Um, so I'm taking it nice and slow here. Uh, he's got a counter on again. Again, he's going to hit my Atonidum. Uh I want my MC to take the damage rather than my Natasha. Uh, he's going to uh, counter back, and then he he loses the counter. It's not like a permanent thing. And again, I, I unfortunately, I even say it out there, uh, I'm going to AoE heal because I don't have access to healing. Um, and he's almost dead, so I'm taking the risk that I can overheal my characters for a second and regain uh, that buff back, so. Just thinking and waiting, I suppose. I'll probably have this part sp sped up a little bit. Um, 13K damage, again, I scream over there because it's, you know, just a lot of damage. So, this is when things get spicy for me. So, Besiege, he buffs his characters. I immediately activate the Remembrance, and again, he he resists. His homies don't resist, but he resists. So uh, again, I'm fo that's a, the MC's attack on four or more stacks is AOE. Again, it is nice to know that Sila's quantum damage does affect all of his, uh, all the opponents that he brings in oh, perpetual freeze. I just kept freezing. So you see that bar? It's like a little circle with a bar above his head. Uh, the every damage that you do to Jepard and to his, uh, his, I keep calling him homies, but the ads that he brings in, uh, it's going to dwindle down his shield, but it's, it acts as its own HP bar. Uh, nothing changes about the fight except for you're directly doing no damage to him. So it doesn't matter if you're hitting his teammates or you're hitting him. So uh, it's easier for me if I hit the quantum characters because Sila's my breadwinner in terms of damage. And uh, the adds have less de less stats on them, so you just do more damage when you attack them. But you won't dwindle their HP. So as you saw there, I was clicking the hell out of Natasha's ult because I absolutely want to make sure that she stayed alive. Um, and I thought that if I pressed the button, the game would hear me, my cries of help. Dwindling down that shield, I have activation of my remembrance. Again, a reason why my remembrance is coming back so much is because, and I get, I only froze him in the first part of the fight. The only time I froze him was the first part of the fight. But I essentially removed his his AOE help, right? His other characters had no effect against me. Not, not for the most part. 
if I if I didn't have this remembrance on and I wouldn't focus solely on damage, there's a chance I could have beat him. But like looking at my health, I would be hurting right now. As you saw right there, my Branya attacked twice. That's because of that blessing that I got that every six turns I'll have access to uh, doing a, a lap myself. The shield's broken. His shield goes down immediately. So now I can take away his ads and he doesn't bring them back. So that's, that's something good to know going into the fight. Again, you could use uh, uh, Su Shang. You could use Hook. You could use Clara. I'm, I literally was rolling my eye trying to figure out who else to use. Uh, again, I, I gritted my teeth with a character like Sila, which I know sounds weird, but it, I didn't have an advantage aside from Branya assisting with the speed and the total damage output that I can do. Uh, because it's not like Branya's, uh, it's not like Sila's getting 17 different turns in one go because I'm not defeating enemies like like how I would expect me to. But uh, the fight's dwindling down. Uh, he, again, he does the same things that he did in the second turn. Um, his elemental resistances are back on. I'm remembering because he's not going to add anymore. And I finally get the frozen with the river. So he's done for two turns. So I could auto this fight at this point. Um... But we want the we want the glory of doing this manually. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what I did for the fights. I know it's kind of a lot, and I kind of just spitballed my way through it. Um, if this benefited you in any way, shape, or form, um, please leave a like. Uh, if I get enough likes, I'll do the exact same thing with a little bit of different interpretation for my World 4. Uh, you can't see me pointing at the screen, but always remember that you are valued and you are appreciated. And uh, let me tell you guys a joke before I leave uh, and it starts when I say <laughs> hey guys have you made it to the end of the video just wanted to say after editing all this uh, some things also happened during the day that it's not my best work and I'll do better on the next video just yeah we'll do better thanks guys